I'm Kevin Cameron, um, indoors on a beautiful day in my little shop. And I want to talk about something that is important to a lot of motorcyclists, and that is engine sound. Because motorcycles have every different number of cylinders that you can imagine, up to generally six as a maximum, uh, singles, twins, triples, fours, at least a couple of sixes. BMW makes one, Honda makes one. Goldwing 1500. Single cylinder engine, generally speaking, an uninteresting sound because it sounds like a lawnmower. When you make a twin, um, the British twins fired uh, at 360 degrees, which meant that they had an even 360 degree firing order. Uh, every other, every revolution they fired and they made a kind of droning sound. Lovers of British Twins like that sound. Possibly a more interesting sound is made when you move those cylinders apart to make a V-twin. Now you have a difference in the firing order so that there is a quiet time, then a cylinder fires, then a shorter quiet time, and another cylinder fires, giving a kind of syncopated da 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 which is why V-twins have a sort of more like a V8 sound and is a more interesting sound to listen to. Clearly, the closer the V angle comes to zero, the more it sounds like a British twin. And out at 90 degrees, there's a Ducati, who have chosen that 90 degree angle because it allows their engine to be self-balancing for primary shaking force. But then we get to the triple. Triples usually have their crank pins at 120 degrees and they produce a wonderful musical sound which I have enjoyed since the first time I heard the Kawasaki H1 in 1969. Then we get to the very popular uh, four-cylinder bikes. Most of them have a so-called flat crankshaft with its crank pins at 180 degrees so that the cylinders in the middle that number two and number three cylinder at top dead center, when number one and number four are at bottom dead center. As a result, uh, the engine fires twice per revolution and the firing interval is always the same. So on a high revving engine, a flat crank four produces the famous GSXR screech. Yamaha, um, after their experience with the M1 road race bike, which was converted to 90 degree crank pins for the 2004 season. Rider Valentino Rossi, who was hired by Yamaha Newley that year, uh, liked the 90 degree crank pin angle better than he liked the 180, so that's what he got. But in terms of sound, like a V-twin differs from a parallel twin, a 90 degree crank pin inline four cylinder makes a throatier, more V8-like sound and does not produce GSXR screech. So it's, that's an interesting difference. And then you have uh, BMW's Touring 6, which is one of the smoothest engines that there is. And it also produces a very smooth sound, just like that of a, a Jaguar inline 6 or a Merlin V12 of World War II. They all have a very similar, quite civilized purr. And then there's the Honda Goldwing, which is a flat six. It has three cylinders this way and three cylinders this way. The aim of this is uh, that you have uh, enough cylinders that they can cancel each other's shaking force, leaving the engine smooth enough for touring. Engine sound also has uh, a component that is determined by how fast the exhaust valve opens. An example of an engine whose exhaust is released very rapidly is a two-stroke engine. The rapid release of exhaust produces a very steep wave front, which people call that ringing two-stroke sound. A four-stroke can approximate that by having very fast lifting valves. 
But if you are trying to make compliance with a federal sound regulation and your styling department has told you exactly how big your mufflers can be, you may have to go back and redesign the camshaft so that you release the exhaust more slowly, resulting in a less steep sound front that turns out to be easier to muffle. Exhaust mufflers usually take the form of a stack of quarter wave tubes, each of which causes noise to be self-canceling within a certain range. By choosing which quarter wave tubes are placed in the muffling system, you can vary the characteristic of the sound. And I believe a great deal of science goes into this. Focus groups are asked to listen to a variety of engine sounds and choose the ones they like and the ones they dislike. So when you hear a crisp, slightly sibilant, but sharp in the upper ranges sound from a stock muffler and you find it pleasing, it is the result of acoustical engineering. They know what you want and they aim to give it to you. But otherwise, the nature of the engine itself uh, determines the basic sound. 